Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Nashville Democratic Congressman Jim Cooper. We're talking about the impeachment trial about to begin in the Senate uh, this coming week. Uh, Congressman, uh, there was a report from the uh, Government Accountability Office, which is a nonpartisan watchdog group, that basically said the, the Trump administration uh, violated the law in not allowing the aid to go forward. But that in and of itself, that's not a reason for, that's not a high crime and misdemeanor. That's not enough for this, the Senate to remove him from office. So what well, role will that play? Uh, everybody in Congress swears an oath to uphold the Constitution, and the Constitution says that Congress appropriates money, and when we do that, because we're the closest to the people, that the President should follow that rule. Now, in a national emergency, he doesn't have to, but you certainly can't withhold aid just for a petty political reason. And remember, this isn't the only time that the President's done it. He withheld $18 billion to Puerto Rico, which is a territory of the United States of America. You know, after the hurricane hit two years ago, he's finally just released that after a two-year wait. The president has a habit of doing this stuff for petty political reasons, and that rises to the level of, of high crime and misdemeanor. Because remember, Watergate, that was about a third-rate burglary. President Trump is the first president to be under impeachment when he's still able to run for re-election. Um, Senator Alexander, who we talked about earlier, has also said that if the idea of this is just to change presidents, we're going to do that, or at least have the opportunity to do that later this year. Isn't that the ultimate reason, perhaps, the Republicans will say, well, if you don't like Donald Trump, beat us in November? Well, and that's a very good political argument, but remember, everybody in Congress swears an oath to uphold the Constitution. We are a country of laws, not of men. And if people intentionally and systematically break the law, they should be held accountable. And the evidence here is overwhelming. The Republicans really haven't even disputed seriously that the president did this stuff. They've mainly made arguments about process and other things, trying to distract us from the real issue. If the um, testimony comes in from Lev Parnas, he also seems to be widening out this to also pot potentially implicate uh, the vice president, secretary of state, the Attorney General, I mean, that is getting to be such a broad situation that is that a, a Pandora's box that anybody on either side really wants to open up? Well, remember how many criminal indictments and convictions have already occurred. The President's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, in prison. The per President's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, in but prison. But they're not cabinet members. I know. Michael Flynn, the top national security advisor, about to go to prison. You know, this is a stunning situation in which the president has surrounded himself literally with criminals. And Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman were arrested and handcuffed at Dulles Airport trying to flee the country with one-way tickets. This is not a good situation. The president should but, associate with higher class people. But Lev Parvis is under indictment. Why, would, why is he credible? He's already had character well, witnesses, uh, character problems before. If his testimony disagreed with what our civil servants were saying, but they are unanimous in saying the president, including uh, Ambassador Sondland, who is the president's own personal pick, saying the president knew all about this, and all the top folks in government knew about this. This is like a conspiracy at the highest levels of government to help Vladimir Putin, the head of Russia. This is wrong. John Roberts, the Chief Justice, will be presiding over this trial, not the Vice President. Um, what role will he play? Could he potentially have to cast some very critical votes? What if there's a 50-50 tie in the Senate to decide to call a witness, or even on the rules itself? He has the right to cast a deciding vote if he wants to. Well, this is very interesting, and as you know, Pat, since we've done this so few times in American history, we don't really know. Most people think that John Roberts is a strong Republican, but a fair man. He wants his legacy to be that he upheld justice in America, not that he sided with one president or another political party. So we don't know how much he will insert himself into the proceedings. My guess is he will hold back as much as possible. I doubt there will be any 50-50 votes. That would be a truly rare situation. In any case, he could not vote as the vice president can to resolve ties in the Senate. But he can be the presiding officer. And you can insert yourself sometimes um, in the process in, in strong ways, but I, I think Roberts will hold back primarily. This is the time of year that the State of the Union is being given by the President. Uh, we may still have the Senate doing their trial in the middle of the time that President Trump is supposed to come out and do that. When this happened 20 years ago with President Clinton, he went, again, went ahead and gave the speech. Do you expect that's what President Trump will do? And do you also expect the President to give a running dialogue about the trial on his Twitter feed? Well, no president has embraced the media the way Donald Trump has, whether it's at video... Not, at least not social media. <laughs> or, ...or tweets. Every Republican I know wishes he wouldn't do that so much. They wish he wouldn't hold these political rallies all the time and then 
uh, misspeak so many times. But so I don't think the president's going to shy away from the State of the Union at all. I think he will embrace it. He will use it as an opportunity to champion his own case. He's very good at making his own case. But uh, the question is what the American people believe. And I think they're going to be tuned in like crazy over the next few weeks to find out what really happened, whether it rises to the level of impeachment in their eyes. And they're going to be instructing their U.S. senators how to vote because senators represent the people, too. And senators are going to be listening. How good is it for the country, how dangerous is it for the country to have the, the leader of the free world, the most powerful man in the world, sort of in a state of limbo and the government with him in a state of limbo while all this impeachment trial goes on? I'm not sure how much of a distraction it is for the president. You know, right now he's thinking about going to Davos and celebrate with the fat cats of the world over there in Switzerland. Uh, he hasn't slowed his schedule at all. Now, I do think the president shouldn't have done all these things. He shouldn't have been so buddy-buddy with Vladimir Putin. He shouldn't have withheld from the public, even from his own staff, what he talked with Putin about when in, up in Finland in that Helsinki thing. One of the few times in world history when our leader was not even open with his own staff about what was going on. And we know that the president didn't tell the truth about that Trump Tower Moscow where he offered Vladimir Putin the penthouse apartment, and this was going on during the campaign while he was soliciting Russian help to help him win that election. And the president didn't stop there. He's asked China to help him win the election. He asked U Ukraine to help him win the election. You don't go to foreign powers and solicit help to win a U.S. election. National Congressman Jim Cooper is our guest on Inside Politics. We'll come back in just a minute. We'll talk about some other issues that are going around in Washington, things Congress is normally involved in. Back after this message.